Now, some UFO skeptics would like you to believe that all UFO researchers are gullible, scientifically ignorant crackpots. Some are. Many aren't. That's right, John. One organization in particular has earned a reputation for their sober, dedicated analysis of UFO encounters. They're called the Mutual UFO Network, or MUFON. Recently, we observed this organization in action. Vancouver, British Columbia. Like every city in the world, UFOs have allegedly crisscrossed its skies. Last spring, radio disc jockey Bill Courage saw and videotaped a UFO. One night, he told his listeners about it. The feedback was overwhelming. What surprised me was the next day, I still got calls. The subsequent week, four weeks, five weeks after that, I was still receiving calls. To answer some of his listeners' questions, Bill called in a special guest. The Bill Courage Show, a special Friday in that... Uh, we're speaking with those who have seen unusual things in the sky to help straighten out some of these stories. The man with the Mutual UFO Network, Michael Stranick, in studio here. And we have another tale to tell. Uh, so, uh, Andy, you saw something rather strange rather recently. Yeah. The Mutual UFO Network has thousands of members all over North America and in over 50 countries around the world. As head of MUFON of Canada, Michael Stranick spends much of his time searching for proof of the existence of UFOs. I personally think this is the most important thing that has ever faced the human race. We have to do it because nobody else is doing it. But is there really anything to be studied? The answer is up to you. Make up your own mind. I'm not trying to convince anyone. I stopped doing that years ago. There is a phenomenon here. Take a look at it. If you can explain it, fine. I'm willing to listen. So far, I haven't heard a good skeptical argument. Among the callers was a woman named Andrea. Andrea, we're all ears. Tell us of your experience. Hi. Well, this was nothing like I had ever seen in my life before. There were three the experiences she described were extraordinary, yet they fit a pattern. On occasions, I have woken up with my back burnt. Other wow. times, I've woken up with my eye uh, incredibly swollen and full of blood. Um, I believe that I have an implant in my eye. Michael knew Andrea's story would be worth checking out. Do you know, some of the people who say they've seen UFOs, they don't come across as very credible. Mm, it's not been my experience. I don't know who you've spoken to, but I'd say most of the people who report UFOs to us are extremely credible. These are people whose testimony would put you or me in prison. Their testimony is believed in a court of law. It's just when it comes to the UFO problem, people don't want to believe these people. I asked Michael what he looks for when he analyzes a UFO video. Okay, I think that object there could pass as the sun, shrouded by a bit of fog. Oh, it could in the entire clip, though, if that's, uh, you mentioned passing, it's passing right over the camera, and if that's the sun, we're in big trouble. Can you explain what that object is doing? It appears to be sitting there being a little odd. I don't know what it is. We won't really have any clue to what it is until we have it analyzed by the MUFON video analyst. Then we'll have a better idea what it may not be. We probably will never know what it is for certain. Back to you, sir. Assisting Michael in his research is UFO investigator Graham Conway. Together, they hit the road to follow up on new leads. For Graham, a former police officer, this type of work is second nature. I often find that they have lived uh, near power stations and power lines. This keeps on coming up. Field investigation is only one of many responsibilities of MUFON. In Canada, the paperwork begins in the home office of Michael Stranick. This is where much of the hard work gets done, including analysis of hundreds of home videos. The paperwork is astounding, the hours are incredible, and it's a volunteer organization. Meanwhile, at the home of Daniel Bourgeois and Colleen Allen, Michael and Graham begin by tape recording the couple's account of their encounter. I saw orange beams of light underneath. I just could see the bottom. It was horrifying. It bothers me when I tell people that I've seen a UFO. The skepticism is, is so frustrating to have people not believe you when it's so real. After gathering data for over an hour, Michael and Graham thought their investigation was complete. And if uh, anything else should occur, please let us know. You know, actually, I wanted to mention something to you that just skipped my mind. What's that? I wanted to ask you, does my huge hydro bills mean anything to you? Because we have humongous hydro bills. Meaning, what, how much is huge? 
We had, in the winter time, about mm -hmm. 600 every two months. For this house? 300 in the summer. Oh, you've got, you've got to be kidding. You're not using any heat in the summer. We checked out their hydroelectric bills and found they were enormous. On a hunch, Graham and Michael inspected the neighborhood. It's the nearest area where these power lines are located. And as the UFO flies, that's about, uh, what, a quarter of a mile from their house? Just about. Yeah. We've noticed a real correlation to power transformers, power lines, substations, especially abduction cases. Their next visit is to Andrea Shale, the woman who claimed on the radio to be an abduction victim. Andrea told us that in a desperate attempt to escape these alien abductors, she has moved over 42 times. With tape recorder rolling, Michael and Graham listened to Andrea's story. And they have holding tanks and it's like got a, a blue liquid in it. Yeah, to me, it was like being sterilized. When Michael and Graham told me about Andrea's claims, I investigated for myself. I wondered if she wasn't just confusing dreams with reality. I know what a dream is. Um, I've had nightmares, I've had dreams all my life, just like you or anybody else. You don't wake up from a dream with a nosebleed. You don't wake up from a dream being burnt, a severe burn on your back. My eye was swollen out like this, just like a, a baseball. And I had an x-ray done at the inside of my eye. And behind my eye, they showed me on the x-ray was a little round ball bearing thing. And the specialist told me that they could not remove this, whatever it was. They didn't know how it got there, but they could not remove it because it was right next to the optic nerve and I would go blind if they tried to. We managed to obtain a copy of Andrea's x-rays. It appears something strange is behind her right eye. Uh, I consider uh, Andrea to be a very normal person uh, by any other standards, and her experiences are similar to what I've heard from other directions or from other people over a long period of time. Despite their sympathetic approach, Graham and Michael find that people are reluctant to describe their UFO experiences. Credibility is like virginity. You only lose it once. You never regain it. Few people who encounter UFOs are seeking publicity. They simply need someone to tell them that they're not hallucinating and they're not alone. As an organization that's been compared to a crisis hotline or to Alcoholics Anonymous, MUFON does both. It's like receiving a life-saving ring when you're drowning because there's nothing out there and you're the only people out there that can help you. Sandra, just how do Michael and Graham deal with the inevitable skepticism they must encounter? Well, John, as you've seen, these men are professionals. And like many hardened UFO experts, they understand that skeptics go with the territory. And after investigating story after story, they're pretty skeptical themselves. As they well should be. And Encounters will be right back. If you would like to contact us here at Encounters,